Welcome to another video in our video series Think 6, brought to you by Roland Schwartz. In a recent video, I provided a brief and high-level introduction to the technology components currently under research to eventually become a part of a 6G standard. Today, I would like to provide some more insights into what spectrum 6G may take advantage of and specifically focus on terahertz frequencies. If you study today's available literature on what 6G may look like, you come across several 6G vision papers of wireless industry's well-known key players. They all list sub-terahertz and terahertz frequency support as one of the key aspects of a 6G wireless communication standard. The typical explanation is that there are much wider bandwidths at these higher frequencies, so peak data rates in the one terabit per second realm seem feasible. However, other application areas might initially be an even more pragmatic use case for terahertz frequencies. These areas include accurate positioning, sensing, location awareness, and gesture recognition, allowing resolutions down to the sub-centimeter and even millimeter level, therefore enabling these type of applications. However, as we all know, there is no free lunch. Researchers worldwide must overcome tremendous challenges to make this technology component work, within the next decade. It starts with the right semiconductor technology that can generate the necessary output power to overcome the higher path loss and be sca scalable simultaneously from a commercialization point of view. There's always a trade-off between speed, output power and mass producing these components at an affordable cost. As the perfect transistor technology does not exist, it is still a compromise that the industry must find. So what frequencies in terms of terahertz are we talking about exactly? Let me start by saying that 6G will use the sub 8 gigahertz and millimeter wave spectrum in the same way today's 5G standard does. The support of terahertz is just another frequency layer on top of those frequencies. For 5G, the support of frequencies beyond 52.6 gigahertz was already considered. However, the industry could only find consensus to extend the range for millimeter wave from 52.6 gigahertz to 71 gigahertz while defining additional subcarrier spacings of 480 kilohertz and 960 kilohertz and wider bandwidth support of up to 2 gigahertz. During those discussions also frequencies beyond 100 gigahertz were discussed and unofficial terms like FR4 up to 114.25 gigahertz, FR5 up to 275 gigahertz or FR6 up to 330 gigahertz were established. According to the official definition of the ITU or IEEE, terahertz frequency range starts at 300 gigahertz. Nonetheless, frequencies beyond 100 gigahertz are typically considered terahertz in many publications, sometimes called subterahertz. Typically, the spectrum is organized by waveguide definitions where we have D-band from 110 to 170 gigahertz as a prominent example. Several research institutes, universities and industry players announced their work in this particular band. However, it is not a spectrum officially assigned to 6G just yet. It is within the reach of the industry, low-hanging fruits if you like, as a spectrum that can be addressed by today's technology when mastering specific challenges and therefore marks an ideal candidate for fundamental research. So what's the status of higher frequencies from a regulatory point of view? The final report from the ITU's World Radio Conference 2019 targets the frequency range between 275 to 450 gigahertz, initially focusing on four subbands as shown here. In the United States of America, the Federal Communications Commission set up the Spectrum Horizon initiative to open up the spectrum between 95 gigahertz and 3 terahertz and make it more accessible for academia and industry by granting experimental licenses that last up to 10 years. As the spectrum between 100 and 300 gigahertz is currently a focus point of fundamental research, let's take a look at the accessibility, in other words, what portion of the spectrum is actually available for fixed services, such as wireless backhaul or mobile services. As we can see, not all of the spectrum is available. In fact, 
there are already regulations in place as the spectrum is partially used for space exploration, radio astronomy and satellite communication. Those areas are protected and therefore only the areas shown here in dark blue are potentially available for wireless communication, pending regulation of course. Let's overlay the D-band, G-band, H-band and J-band to the spectrum. As we can see, the largest chunks of spectrum offering wide bandwidths are in the D-band with 12.5 GHz and in the J-band with 23 GHz. So I'm showing them here. So we can conclude that today, in late 2022, there is no spectrum officially assigned to what may become a 6G standard. International regulation puts a first emphasis on the frequency range between 275 and 450 GHz. There is only one standard targeting spectrum in this frequency range, which is IEEE's 802.15.3D-2017. The majority of today's scientific publication focuses its research on frequencies between 100 and 300 GHz. However, this spectrum is not yet officially assigned as 6G spectrum. The work is carried out based on experimental licenses granted locally by the respective regulator. This is fundamental research to develop a better understanding on how to use frequencies beyond 100 GHz for wireless communication. Chunks of spectrum are available within that frequency range and would allow wider bandwidths. However, the maximum there is 12.5 and 23 GHz respectively. Nonetheless, frequencies beyond 100 GHz are of high interest to the wireless industry and Roden Schwartz supports this interest with its innovative test and measurement solutions. But this is a topic for another video in our new video series called Think 6.